protect yourself and your vehicle from fire hazard with a cold fire suppression system available exclusively from Speedway Motors. This vital piece of safety equipment can be easily installed in virtually any race car or street vehicle. It features both manual activation and automatic actuation to discharge when fire is detected. The affordable, simple to install system can be customized to fit your vehicle and is easily recharged and reset in minutes. It is non-toxic, non-corrosive, and environmentally friendly. Now, we're going to show you just how easy it is to install the cold fire suppression system. Remove all items from their packaging and ensure that all the components outlined within the instruction manual are included. Unscrew the head from the cylinder. Fill the 1 liter cylinder with a bottle of cold fire suppressing agent. Apply lubricant to the threads and sealing surfaces. Tighten the head on the cylinder hand tight. Then weigh and record the cylinder weight with the valve and shipping bolts installed. The cylinder mount bracket can be mounted two ways. Flat against the reinforced metal surface using the 3 16 holes provided and four bolts, or by utilizing an all-in-one accessory clamp to mount the bottle bracket to a roll bar. Test fit the cylinder onto the bracket to check the orientation of the ports for the nozzle lines. Make sure they have a direct line of sight to the cockpit where both the nozzle and the detection tubes are to be routed. Once the orientation has been confirmed, remove the cylinder. Remove the shipping bolts. These bolts are factory installed to prevent movement of the piston during shipping. Remove the first shipping bolt and replace it with the male hex plug. After the male hex plug has been installed, remove the second shipping bolt and replace it with the compression fitting that holds the nozzle line. Be sure that the compression fitting is installed facing the cockpit. Remove the red detection tube cap on the maintenance valve fitting. Note that the maintenance valve contains a red safety seal. This seal is to ensure the maintenance valve remains open during operation. Reinstall the cylinder so that the Schrader valve is easily accessible and the pressure gauge is viewable. Then secure the cylinder by tightening the integral quick clamp straps. The cylinder is now ready for nozzle and detection tube installation. Locate the composite discharge tubing. This is used as the nozzle line which is connected to the cylinder by the compression fitting. The tubing has been designed to hold its position when bent in a particular direction. The length of the nozzle tube needs to be optimized. Determine the routing of the tubing into the cockpit, then cut with a tube cutter. Grommets or edge molding should be used to protect the line against sharp edges. The tubing must be attached using the supplied loop clamps and hardware. The nozzle should be positioned to shower the driver in a fire hazard. This could be from any angle determined by the installer. Common locations are through the dash panel or attached to the seat and directed at the driver's torso. Next, we'll install the detection tube. The detection tube has two unique ends. One is the crimped end, and the other is the fitting end that attaches to the maintenance valve on the cylinder. The detection tube is wrapped in a stainless steel spring. This protects it from being harmed. The detection tube is temperature sensitive and will burst when sensing temperatures in excess of 175 degrees. Routing of the detection tube can vary depending on application and preference. Routed throughout the cockpit, around the seat, within the engine compartment, or fuel cell area. Use the optional T-Kit for multi-directional placement. Once the placement has been determined, drill a hole through the wall of the cockpit. Use grommets or edge molding to protect the line against sharp edges. Then tighten the detection tube to the maintenance valve. The tubing can be attached using the supply loop clamps or tie wraps. Prior to final placement, position the manual actuator on the detection tube. To do so, insert the detection tube within the bore of the manual actuator. This is done by loosening the pinch bolt on the bottom of the actuator and pulling back the spring from the crimped end. Insert the crimped end of the detection tube into the clamp bore of the manual actuator. The manual actuator will slide anywhere on the detection tube you would like it placed. It should be easily accessible by the driver. There are two threaded holes for 3 8 course bolts to mount the actuator to a flat surface, or use two 1032 through holes in the bottom for attaching the actuator to a roll bar mount. After the manual actuator position has been determined, align the pinch bolt between two coils and tighten. The pinch bolt acts as an indexing mark to ensure that the plunger will clear a coil when pushed. Locate the lanyard for the manual actuator. Bolt one end of the lanyard to the actuator housing and slip the safety clip through the other end. The safety clip should be removed any time the vehicle is in operation. Using a regulated nitrogen supply, pressurize the Schrader valve to 175 PSI. Ensure complete pressurization is achieved with the initial fill. Verify the pressure is in the green zone on the gauge. 
Actuation occurs by depressing the plunger on the manual actuator or by the detection tube sensing heat in excess of 175 degrees. 